Hello, my name is Matt Vecchio. I created our Breaking Bricks. My name is Chris Tofu Chapman. I, I help out a little bit, I guess. And we're going to try to complete uh, this latest version of Breaking Bricks uh, on medium difficulty. It should have all the boss battles just, just in Just medium, it. just medium. Well, just medium because I haven't finished the bosses in hard or extreme. So medium is the average player's playthrough. So we're representing the average player today. So I'm going to be the red paddle. And I'm the blue paddle. And uh, we're going to talk you through the game. And uh, hope you enjoy it. That was a terrible start for me. I'm <laughs> oh, pretty embarrassed. Oh, terrible wow, start for wow. both of us. That's what happens when you're recording, huh? Yeah. I swear this never usually happens. <laughs> So obviously the object of the game is to break all the breakable bricks um, on each level. The white bricks up the top are actually the only unbreakable bricks on this level. There's also black ones and cyan ones that come in a bit later. Now you might notice I picked something up and my bat looks a bit different now. I've got the glue power up, so as you can see, the balls actually land on my bat and they stay there, which is super helpful. And I've actually got two bombs that I've picked up that I'm going to throw out. And I've got a jet bat so I can fly around. I'm going to catch those. Now the cool thing you can ah, do with bombs... I love this commentary. That's <laughs> <laughs> great. The cool thing you can do with bombs is you can actually destroy unbreakable bricks, like which you can bricks, never yeah. usually do. Yeah, the white bricks at the top. And you get a lot more score for that. So let's go ahead and do that. That was a pretty bad effort. We are just doing terrible today. Oh, well, we're still the best in the world. <laughs> we are. Technically speaking, we're the best in the world. So I'll give you this one. I'm going to use the jet bat so I've oh, got some more bombs. Yeah, so check it out. This is the jet bat. It's pretty, pretty cool. I'm about to use it. So you can fly it and as long as you're going fast enough, you can break bricks. Straight up. There we go. So you only lose a life yeah. when you either get killed by an enemy or um, all the balls on the screen have been um, drained. Now I've got, I've got the gun power up, which is pretty cool. I can shoot straight up like that. Or if I press the, uh, the second action button, I guess that's what we call it. You can see my, my cannons now turn out to 45 degree angles. Is it so truly 45 degrees? It's probably not exactly <laughs> right, but, you know, that's the least estimate. Brilliant. So here's some of those cyan bricks in the middle as well. They're called soft bricks and they, break, they make the ball bounce off just slightly. Whereas the, uh, the white ones make it bounce off quite harshly. And as you'll see in later levels, there's also black unbreakable bricks, which will uh, return the ball very fast. So I've got some, a pair of special balls here. These um, checkered ones are good fortune um, balls. So when they hit um, objects, they drop a little coin. You may have noticed I have an interesting ball as well. I got the um, boomerang ball. This return ball. This one's the boomerang, so it will return to me. Now I've got to watch out for the bricks. Um, because they they could kill me. Uh, which they My, um, I can also freeze. The bat I have at the moment is freeze. Um, this game always seems overwhelming when you first watch it. Um, but it does. Uh, and it can be that way. It's got a lot of different power-ups. One for nearly every letter of the alphabet. Also supports up to four players, and when you do have four players in, then you get very great, which can be a lot of fun, um, but it can also be very, very confusing. At times. Yeah, it's kind of good um, playing at one player, like as well, because yeah. it's kind of like a good challenge. And playing at four players is kind of just like a bit of a party game. So, uh, can be. It's a good opportunity to try and uh, try out a higher difficulty though. Yeah, four players. It can be a bit easier. Now you see, I cool. have this, uh, this special is a tractor, so when a ball's under my control, um, I, can, I can either repel it or actually attract it and uh, apparently drop it, because I'm not good at this game. I should say as well that there's three different ways you can hit the ball. You can hit it weak, like this, like I'm doing now. Um, you can hit it hard, or you can just hit it medium, like this. So I'll hit it hard up here. That's what a hard hit looks like. That's a soft hit, and that's a medium hit there. So you sort of got um, 
a lot more control than your traditional um, breakout game. And of course, where you hit the ball, um, depending if you hit it in the center of your bat, you're going to shoot it straight up. If you hit it to the left side, you're going to hit it left. If you hit it to right, you're going to hit it right. So you can use your sort of um, placement to sort of aim as well. And also it's worth mentioning, if you have played this game before, you probably would have noticed by now that the physics is, is quite a bit different in this game. Um, in that there is actually gravity, which usually isn't the case on uh, breakout style games. So the ball does run out of steam and fall back down. Um, try, I think it's quite unique. I think it's actually a more enjoyable play style than the traditional approach. I think it, um, a lot of problems with... Um, you can have the ball over here. Of um, traditional so. breakout games is the rate of play is quite slow. And it takes a while to actually, like, sometimes there would just be one brick to hit on the screen and it takes forever to hit that brick. So I wanted to focus on having a lot of um, ball control. And also with the aspect of gravity, make it so that you have to play the game faster so it is a faster game because a lot of breakout games can be quite slow. So yeah, the idea is that every time you break a brick, you usually get um, points as well, but some bricks, instead of giving you points, drop coins or rubies, um, which give you points instead. Just the idea of making the game a little bit different sometimes by giving you some power-ups, because, I don't know, there's some sort of satisfaction in collecting uh, <laughs> power uh, collecting, um, you know, objects that give you um, points. Absolutely. And after a while you will start to develop uh, preferences for different power-ups so sometimes you'll actually find yourself avoiding certain power-ups because uh, you might already have your favourite one. So that's a, it's a pretty interesting element. Um, but sometimes you're forced to get the power-up if the ball happens to be in that spot at that time. You also notice my paddle's smaller at the moment so it's an interesting power-up. Uh, I'll give you one which is Which is tiny, which is a tiny bat. Um, which of course does make it a bit harder for me, but the trade-off is I get double the points while I have Tiny Bat. And the Tiny Bat idea is from the, you know, one of the breakout classic games, Aquanoid. When I was doing a bit of research for this game, I realised that in Aquanoid, when you do have this reduced power-up that makes your bat smaller, it actually gives you double points. So with in this game, we've kind of also put that rule set in. So if you want a bit more of a challenge and you want the tiny bat, there is a bit of a um, benefit in that you get double points. I always think it's worth going for tiny bat, particularly when you've got glue, because glue does make it pretty pretty easy anyway, so it sort of offsets the challenge somewhat. Now you see something pretty funny happen with me then. Those yeah, we should say there's actually... Uh, uh, yeah, this level uh, actually has some time, so those little black... Um, bricks with the little circle actually shoot a uh, yellow and white bullet. If you hit that, the player will just get stunned for a moment. I'll just get hit and show you. It's nothing too drastic, but it gives you a little bit of a challenge. Later, you will see another type of turret though, which is a lot more challenging. Yeah. Um, that power up that we just avoided then, uh, it's because we, we do want to show you what all the levels look like, yeah. but that one actually will warp you immediately to the next level. Yeah, so. warp, warp, <laughs> warp capsule, warp power up. Warp capsule, yeah, why not? I got confused, I got confused what it was called for a moment. So <laughs> we're doing pretty well. Um, I should also say every, um, what is it, 100,000? You get a point? No. Yeah, it one is, isn't it? I thought that, I don't know, you made the rules. I don't know 000. how to count. I don't know how to. Yeah, every one hundred thousand um, points, you get an extra life. As you'll see uh, down in the down in the hub there, that that figure on the left is our lives. Um, obviously, the figure on the right is the score. You probably figured that out. Um, you see in the middle as well. There's there's a bunch of information there. Uh, the credit is actually shared. So if one of us completely runs out of lives, we can use a credit to rejoin the game. Um, and if a third or fourth person uh, comes along and thinks they want to join in, they can actually use a credit to, to join the game as well. Yeah, and it's a way to sort of like gauge the difficulty. So um, no matter what, in Breaking Bricks, you always start with six credits. So you, um, 
if you play that with four people, um, the credits, you don't have a lot of credits, but if you play it for one person, you've got quite a lot of credits. So that's a way to kind of help scale the difficulty um, and a really neat way to do it. There's also boss battles um, halfway through each playthrough. Which hopefully we'll, we'll see. get to, and when uh, you this is this is uh, basically an alpha version of the game, so no guarantees that it won't uh, have some of the bugs come along and spoil our fun. But hopefully it'll it's work out. Pretty well. pretty bug free. Um, yeah, so the power up I've got at the moment is actually freeze. So any balls that are under my control, which are my color, I can um, freeze, which is pretty cool. Now, uh, the more astute among the viewers may have noticed I'm having a bit of trouble aiming the ball. Um, now, that is another thing with the with the tiny paddle, um, and also there is a another variant where you get a larger paddle, um, where you do actually get reduced accuracy. So the the standard size paddle is really the best one for aiming. It's the one you get most most used to. That's why I think. Yeah, that's that's probably more the case. We haven't even explained why the balls go over different colours. So the last, oh, person, yeah, of course. The last per person to hit the ball, it will go that player's colour. And that just means that that player can use any power-ups that are related um, to affecting the ball on that ball and also the points. Um, so if a ball that's your colour um, breaks a brick, um, you get the points. So that's all it is and that's why it changes colour. Now this is a pretty cool power up I have right now. This actually teleports me to the location of the ball, as I just saw. Yeah. Um, I did a pretty bad job with it. <laughs> it's 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 not really that obvious to see its use right now, but it can be very useful when you've got several balls that you're yeah, trying to it's merge. The best bat best bat power up for um, keeping track of multiple balls. Mm. Because that's the one thing that's hard in this game is to keep afloat many balls at once. See, so he can just jump and do it. So it can can be very useful. It's a lot more interesting than when there's several balls in play, as we were saying. But um, now it's, it's pretty cool. So I don't think we talked too much about some of the different balls. This this ball I have right now, you see, is grey. Um, it still has the same rules with changing ownership. Uh, uh, in terms of who gets the points, but it doesn't change colours, just so you can consistently see uh, that it is a different ball. Yeah, and this ultra ball, ball will actually yep. just go through everything. Ah, oh, we, uh, we didn't so. get to show you. <laughs> I'm sure another one will come up. Uh, they do get reset every time the level changes. Yeah, so. ultra ball basically will just... It won't bounce off the it will just go straight through the ball, so it kind of destroys... Makes it, yeah, a lot of carnage. Which is particularly good when you've got some of the bricks that are that actually have a few hit points, um, the ultra ball will just go right through, whereas you know it may take as many as three hits with a regular ball to, to destroy it. So they can be really helpful on levels with a lot of those bricks. So that's a boomerang ball. So if you were to hit that, if that was, Sorry. if that ball was able to hit I'll under a brick, it will go back to you. Can. Go back to you like a boomerang. So I'm doing, doing a terrible job of illustrating. Let's see if we get there. Yeah, you do it here. It should go back. Yep. So it comes straight back to me, makes it super easy. And I mean, I have, I have teleport now as well, so it's like, uh, if I did drop the ball, then I'd be pretty pretty bad. The P power up makes it rain points. Which is awesome. Uh, you see, there's when that happens, there's a, a bunch of different coins and, and gems. They all have different values. Um, so I managed to pick up a green one then, which I'm pretty oh, happy wow. about. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to boast about it. Uh, which are the most valuable ones, so it's, it's always interesting. <laughs> it's always interesting getting the most valuable. That's a bit oh! more interest you're trying to... Oh, we've got something interesting there. The yellow capsule turns every brick into a yellow. And I put this little tune in there. Wow, that's new. I haven't yeah. heard this yet. I know, and I got distracted oh. by listening to it. Uh -huh. It's very distracting. <laughs> uh, which, you know, that, that does bring up the point of music. There will be music in this game. Yeah, I haven't finished the music yet. Right now, yeah, it seems, seems a little lonely. Um, but hey, it's all the better voices. to hear us talk, yeah. Yeah. It's, who needs music? 
Ooh. Now these bricks that are in the middle, um, those check with well, the checkered pattern, uh, they are filled. They're called frag bricks and fragment and shrapnel bricks. Frag bricks and shrapnel bricks, and they shoot out bullets when you when you break them. So let's check so, them out if, uh, if I can be accurate enough. There we go. And if you hit them, you get stunned. But if you hit the blue ones at the top, they will shoot deadly bullets that will kill you if you get hit by them. So as I was saying uh, before when we first saw the turrets, there are other types of bullets. Yeah, so that's so actually, those, those are deadly. And these bullets can be released from turrets, you'll, you'll probably see in some later levels as well. The levels that you get are random, in a sense that um, there's different level sets, and you know what level sets you're in by the background colour. And the game draws from multiple level sets per each playthrough. So uh, at the moment, this is level 12, but this is from the C level set. Because we've got the yellow background, which means that it's C. So every time you play it, you're going to get slightly different levels. Oh. Which uh, I think I think is an awesome concept. Obviously, it adds a lot of replayability to the game. Yeah, um, I mean, and that you're unlikely to ever get exactly the same playthrough. It's, it's yeah. very, very unlikely. So at the moment, we're playing with three level sets. We're playing with um, A, B, and C. So we're playing with green um, backgrounds, which typically are the easiest levels. Um, yellow, uh, yellow ones, which are a bit harder, and um, and medium sort of level set is the blue ones. <laughs> I probably didn't explain that that well, but you know. No, no, that makes sense, I think. <laughs> but then I do already know the rules myself, so. Watch out. Um, so what about a bit of explanation as to, you know, you can see where our paddles overlap sometimes. Um, it's, it's often confusing to players as to who will get the ball. Do you, do you have some, uh, some info on that, Matt? Uh, yes, so one thing when programming this game uh, and making it two players is that um, I was very curious to see how the um, game was going to handle um, two bats in the same location hitting a ball and who's going to get the preference. And I thought I would have to program this, like, you know, really complicated um, piece of code to sort of work that out. But the engine that I'm making the game in, which is called Phaser, um, tends to handle that pretty well and it seems almost random who's going to get the ball anyway so I never had to worry about it so that was uh, kind of a bit lucky really yeah so it does confuse some people sometimes they're thinking oh how can I make sure I get the ball and well you sort of can't you just yeah, if, I don't if know you want it go where it is and uh, hopefully you'll get it it's, it's like a I don't know how phases works it out so I'll hold the ball and you get him up oh you got some power for that. You alright, Chris? Um, I'm sorry to say... It's stuck. Oh no, I thought it was a bug. Uh, I think we're, the controller's stuck. We're using, uh, yeah, this retro link, um, the sort of, like, snare knockoff. Sometimes knock it, yeah, sometimes. Oh, and there's knockoffs. Uh, my button actually got stuck. Yeah. Uh, I did think it was stuck. <laughs> the controller has a they're, bug. They're cool, they're cool looking controllers. You'll be able to see, there's a photo of this, uh, this setup on Facebook if you want to check them out. It's, uh, it's nice, just, you know, it's sort of completes the retro experience. We have uh, publicly shown this game, I think, twice now, haven't we? Yeah. At different events, and we set it up with all these retro-looking controllers. It's, it's a nice touch, I think. And people don't know what console, if they think they're playing an emulator Yeah, game it, is, or... it is funny. Everyone assumes that this is actually... Oh, Chris just read that one. Um, that this is actually an old game, and they're, they're always asking, oh, is this a... Uh, the last one, actually, they asked if this is one of those new classic Nintendos. And uh, when I said no, they, they straight away, oh, is it an emulator then? Um, really? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they seem unwilling to accept that this is just it's just a computer. It's, this is actually. My browser. Are we running this in Electron or? No, we're running it in Google Chrome. Yeah, it so runs it's just a little bit smoother Chrome. on my computer for some reason. So I, I don't think. Um, oh, I don't think hold Electron. Up, let's talk about those things. Okay. So you think. I just think it's worth mentioning while it's happening that sort of scaffolding is pretty cool, so you've got to watch out for that. They are among the uh, ranks of the bricks you have to destroy to pass the level. Yeah. But there is obviously the risk of them dropping down and killing you. Yeah, so if we were to hit them, we would get killed. Yeah. 
Oh, D. Airstrike. Not the best level to illustrate it because there's a lot of bricks at the top. Hopefully we'll get that again later and you can see it's it. It's quite, quite Now, rare. you're about to see something a bit weird with my boomerang. So, see how it, uh, it's falling into those funny colourful bricks. There's a few different types of teleportation for balls um, in this game. This is the first one we've seen on this playthrough, which will just randomly teleport to another section. Um, you will hopefully see on some other levels, there's, there's different varieties where they will... Uh, there's, there's portals, so it'll actually transport the ball from one location to a, another exact location. Which is a pretty cool element. Oh, actually, we saw that on an earlier level, didn't we? And yes, we did. Yeah. So, the level after this, we're going to be doing a boss battle. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I have faith. Oh, we could lose all our And here we go. Um, now, oh, Matt already had it, I didn't notice. So you see we've uh, got the long bat now. Yeah, we've had the long bat heaps of times. Um, but I guess I don't pay as much attention as I tend to. <laughs> so, it's, you know, it can make it pretty easy. Um, I find it a bit frustrating because uh, I do prefer the way the, the medium one behaves. So, it's interesting. A lot of people really like it. Um, they it's like good the for beginners. Numbers. Yeah. yeah. It's good for that conf good for confidence. Yeah, you, you can be quite sure. Uh, well, at you least a lot C. more certain that you. The the thing yeah. about bat power ups also get affected by the size of your bat. So if you've got glue and you're actually a large bat, you can hold up to about seven bats, uh, seven oh, balls yeah. um, at once when you've got glue. Uh, and if you are normal size, I think you can hold about five. And if you're tiny, you can only hold three. Come the other way. Okay, I caught that. See what I did? Were you paying attention? Yeah. Um, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually, I was actually thinking it would probably be a good idea to illustrate what happens when that happens. Ah, uh, the ghosts. If Matt had got the glue, and uh, if Matt hadn't have got the glue, um, it actually would have cancelled my glue. Which is why uh, I uh, was saying this there, boss fight. Like so this is, um, you know, there's, at the moment there's six different boss fights. Um, this one is about being stealthy, so what happens is that these ghosts, yeah, you have to ghosts. avoid them. Um, and what you need to do oh, is hit those switches to um, put them into a stun mode like this. So when they're like this, Oops. we can hit them. That was a pretty bad play. And now they will reset to their normal self. So you don't want to hit them when they're alive, you want to hit them when they're stunned, otherwise they're going to go crazy and attack it. Yeah, we've done we've done a pretty bad job of this. Um, <laughs> but right. usually, uh, so yeah. if I can get this switch, then we can get into the mode where we can hit them again. Which is great if you can avoid hitting them at all until you've activated the switches. Um, and it's a pretty smooth playthrough because they yeah. they'll just sit there and won't attack you. These guys are kind of like the stealth bosses. Each boss battle kind of has a different sort of gameplay idea. This one is about stealth. It's probably the first time. Um, in this playthrough, we've seen some dropping flat fire as well, isn't it? Uh, I think fire has been there. Is it? Alright, well, if it hasn't, there it is. Dropping fire, ladies and gentlemen. And did we talk about this, uh, this ball as well? This is this is a, one of my favourite balls, the heat ball. You see it's oh, dropping, yes. Dropping, dropping all those fire, I thought you meant the heat ball. No, I, um, no, no, I, I meant the enemy. Pretty cool. See um, anything that it, the fire lands on, it will. Yeah, you'll actually see those two switches are actually activated by the embers dropping. Them, so um, you don't even need to get a direct hit with this one. It is, it is pretty cool. This guy, the fire should help us out. Yeah. Got him once. Got quite a few. I think there's a few hits on that one. No, but he he can only when he gets hit, he gets stunned, and when he's stunned, he can't get hurt anymore. Right. Big blue ring I caught. That's uh, that's the idea. You get you collect those from the bosses. So that idea is probably going to be developed a bit further. Yeah. I don't know if we've seen those switch bricks. Hmm. So you see that that one's greyed out that I hit now. If we wait a bit longer, oh. uh, you can see it's become solid again. So they only they only break temporarily. Yes. Yeah, right. So this is a special type of barrier. This green barrier. 
that um, all your collectibles will just stay on the barrier, ready for you to collect it, sort of catches them for you as well. So you can see that coin just sitting there, so I can go and collect it at my level. And I'll get this fire. Oh, I think yellow. And you can listen to the music. And listen to the music. Oh, easy come, easy go. That's right. Uh, so now you see the benefit of uh, me being able to turn my turrets with the firepower up. Um, obviously, I wouldn't have been able to shoot through these white bricks, so that would have made this power useless. So, see, I'm trying to shoot now, I can't. Um, you might have oh, noticed that. Uh, yeah, the bullets actually do get gradually more and more transparent, and that's illustrating the fact that you're running low on ammo. Um, that wasn't always the case, but it was, a, it was a change that was made to add a bit more balance, because otherwise, I'd sort of when you get to fire power up, it became a bit easy, didn't it? You just, yeah. you just rush through, you know, level after level, just shooting everything. There are some levels that will set your bat if it's more of a, um, oh, that was um, airstrike. Good to see. Now, well, airstrike will destroy unbreakables as well, won't it? Yeah. yeah. So we didn't get really get to see it before because the the level had a lot of bricks up the top and they sort of gobbled it up. But, but it also depends. It is, uh, it's it's random how much um, missiles right. it actually shoots. So sometimes it won't be that devastating. Sometimes it will. So if you didn't catch it, airstrike, uh, as the name suggests, it drops a bunch of uh, missiles from from the air. And uh, it's a pretty awesome power up to get. I think it's pretty rare to get those, isn't it? Yes. It's one of the rare ones. Same as the boomerang um, power up? Yeah. Oof. So, some, bit, some strange ball behavior there. Uh oh. Uh, so, you see how barrier did go? The barrier can only um, stop so many balls. Um, and also, you notice I haven't respawned, so there you yes. go. That's uh. You want to use your first credit? Sad, sad. And now I lose my big, big high score, which is a bit sad face. But there we go. We'll build it up again. Just throw your ball. Oh. I, I knew you had it. I had faith. So uh, here's some more teleporting stuff. You see the blue and the red circles there. They're portals, and they will teleport directly to each other. Um, rather than those uh, sort of multicolored ones that just do a random teleportation. Um, so this level actually has no power-ups. This is more of a, a kind of a skill and aiming shooting one. So some levels, um, yeah, don't have any power-ups in them, and they're just about skill shots, really. Well, let's... So you got to be careful not to get stuck under those uh, unbreakables. Yeah. So it can be quite strategic. Now what we should be trying to do here is you see the, the uh, red, white and blue checker ones are always lives. So it's pretty crucial to not make them the last brick you break, which is probably what's going to happen here. I'm going for it. Oh um, no. Yeah, so now now we're not going to get that life, so it's a, it's a bit of a strategy, but it's, this level does actually make that quite hard to achieve, which is uh, an interesting challenge. I designed it to be like that. Yes, on purpose, because you're an evil person. I haven't played this level that many times. Black, black unbreakable bricks are crazy on how they bounce. They are the, very dangerous. Yeah, the fastest return out of all the, uh, all the bricks, so you got to look out for them. Why am I trying to go up there? It just seems like the logical thing to do. See, that's, oh, that's, yeah. where you want it. that's that's the one. That's exactly what you want. To do drops like that, it was actually quite hard to program the ball to behave in that way. There's actually a lot of thought that has to go into thinking about how the ball is going to react. Mm. But I think that's like with making anything. Things that seem <laughs> seem simple that you take for granted are actually a lot more complex. But it's one of the big pleasures of Breakout is to like get the ball to just bounce around and hit, multi destroy a lot of bricks with just one shot. 
Mm. Okay. Yeah, it always was on the classic games, so it's, it's good to be able to recreate that, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, a bit of crazy behavior there sometimes. It's always fun. Yeah, the ball does behave a oh, little bit so weird sometimes. One, one thing we didn't mention then is uh, the background was grey for a while after I picked the S power up. Um, which really wasn't much use on this level, but it can be... Um, which actually just slows everything down. It's particularly useful when you play on the higher difficulties. It can, um, yeah. it can come as a real relief because uh, it gets intense on the higher difficulties. I'm just going to freeze my ball and then destroy. I'm just being careful not to overshoot uh, my upward trajectory here. So I don't want to hit this like Because um, hitting, uh, hitting unbreakables with jet will do. <laughs> Pretty dangerous. Wow, that's really pretty. Yeah, yeah. That was something pretty special. But then that craziness we talk about. <laughs> you get some craziness. Do you understand what happened? Yeah, so I, I actually just picked up the power up there, so I lost my jet and I uh, got the freeze back. Not really what I wanted, but uh, you know, sometimes you can't actually avoid it. It's kind of a There's another type of uh, teleportation now, we've got the green portal, um, which is similar to the relationship between the blue and red, but it's only one way. So yeah. it will only go in the blue and out the green, but not the other way around. Um, which wasn't really illustrated there, but I'm sure you get the idea. Balls are spark balls, so they'll shoot at these sparks, and any sparks that hit a brick will be destroyed. Yes. <laughs> I agree. Um, you could do the spark freeze trick. Yeah. So you see when I freeze it, it shoots out some sparks, which is pretty cool. Um, it's not really near a freeze right now, so let's see if we can set that up to be a bit more effective. But yeah, there's lots of little secrets like that in the there game. There we go, you'll see that actually did hit that brick. It's, mm. it's gone down another level of uh, transparency. So the different bat types have it's kind of little, little quirks and little, little hidden secrets. Yeah, and that's the interesting thing about the, the freeze bat. It was, uh, it was never my favourite power up, but it has some, some sneaky little tricks up its sleeve once you get, once you get to know it a bit better. So I did manage to get it again there, that's cool. Um, which is good because I'm being very accurate today. And Matt's just this really is... wishing he had just just two more bullets, just two more bullets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and make all the difference. One more shot. <laughs> oh, there the is. power of sparks. The shot master, they call me. No, no, one, no one calls me that. I call myself that. But I guess that doesn't count for much. I'll let you get it, sorry. I get a bit. How's your shot? Oh. Wasn't under my control, unfortunately. So, yeah, of course, with, as with most oh. power ups, uh, if the ball's not under my control, then I can't freeze it. See this background? This is a new background I made. That's a cool one. I haven't seen this one yet. I've seen this level. This level's not, hard. Not this background. This, this is a challenging one. It's hard. Maybe I'll let you have it, then you can sort of freeze it in the. Probably. Yeah, yeah. This can be the some of the cool teamwork aspects, you know, is uh, looking at who's got what power up and what's going to be the most useful. So if you get it in the crevice and then freeze it, and let the ball move into you like that. But I want to avoid uh, hitting those blue portals because, uh, as you'll see with where the green portal is, it's not, not the ideal place for it to come out, but that didn't, that didn't turn out too bad. We normally struggle with this level, but I don't know. It's we find it very easy on medium, medium these days. I think the freeze bat uh, oh, yeah. makes a big difference, <laughs> you know. Otherwise, we would have been we would have just had to try and go for that. We've had a very so good I'm run. I'm just going to ride this out. 
Just uh. Yeah, and then I'll freeze it. Yeah, it's gonna boom. Be... That didn't work out as well as I wanted it to, but that's cool. You could try that's... to get the stop button. So that's that's an interesting approach as well. Oh. Um, oh yeah, so we probably haven't seen the stop button. So that is that's a stop start. The the black with the blue square. And how we lose our um, yeah. So some some levels will actually start uh, in mobile, but they do have one of those buttons which will start them moving, um, which can often be a disadvantage, and uh, it's often you'll accidentally trigger it, and it just makes life harder, which is another interesting aspect. One for one. It's a good level for uh, for the hot ball. If you can get it up on top there, but do it the traditional way. Uh, this is another skill level. No power-ups, see if you can get on targets. So again, yeah, with some of the levels, how they reset the power-ups, uh, depending on what sort of level it is. So this one is all about just making trying to shots. be precise. This yeah. is, when I started making this game, I started to get into uh, pinball in real life, and this is a level that's kind of inspired by... Um, I think in a way the game in general is somewhat inspired by pinball. In some... Degree, like the idea of putting the gravity was probably came from pinball. Yeah. At the time. Which I, I think is good. I think it's a, it's a great marriage of ideas. Levels like this are can be a bit slow and frustrating, but at the same time, I think. They're yeah, pretty rewarding as well. Could break up, but yeah, they definitely. Uh, you can get frustrated, but it's a different type of skill that you need to have. This um, this sort of level can be particularly hard with a lot of players. Yeah. Because uh, people will find it hard to actually come to this. an agreement to, as to yeah as to who's going to take the shot. Oh. So I think. Mean, me and Matt have played enough that we just sort of take it in turns a bit without communicating much about it. But yeah, when we play bigger games, it can be Particularly with people that are playing for the first time, especially <laughs> when uh, we show it at events. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it can get very frustrating for us, but as long as people are having fun, that's good. Good, good. It just shows oh. you how um, much aiming there is in the game. Yeah, it's a big element. Do you want to go for it? But it is, um, you know, but it's good because oh, it's good shot. it is consistent the way in which the ball behaves um, yeah. between the ball and the bat. So once you do learn it, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So again, we've got these, these frag bricks here. Um, We've got the deadly ones up the top, we're going to have to be careful about them. To now one thing you can do with bullets, uh, I don't think we mentioned before, is the ball will actually break it. Um, yeah. It will destroy the bullet. Um, what can be handy is if you've got blue, um, is to actually, you can leave the ball on your bat and use it as a deflector as the bullets come down. Just, um, I'm trying to break. I am, I'm going to break some stuff. I'm not going to do this because they'll kill me. Oh, oh, but I did it after saying I win. Oh. Um, oh, that was interesting. It's kind of a bug. So that was a bit of, a bit of an overshot there. Um, and I wasn't quick enough to go with the down on the jet. Played this level for a while. It's an interesting one. So I'm going to give you the ball. Wow, I can't believe I got it up the top there. That's uh, really cool. Yeah, I've never seen yeah, it. Yeah, it's really sharp. Those ball always a lot of fun, aren't they? Always. Kind of carnage. Oh, I got that one. Oh, that's a new feature, Chris. Oh, yep. Yeah. That's yes. because I hit it. Because I hit your dead paddle. Yeah. yeah it's a bit morbid. <laughs> you know, 
my friend died, so what, what I hit you, his corpse what and they explode into the air. What did you think of that? Did you yeah, I like, I like that. I didn't actually, uh, I didn't really register what it was when it happened to me just before. But now, now I get it. Oh, when you did to yourself? Yeah, well, I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was... This level actually looks like a reward, but it's actually quite tricky. Because at the top is actually some ah, dead yeah. cards. Ah, yeah. So this is the first time I've seen this in this playthrough. So you, you can get distracted in the coins and forget that there's dead in this level. Yeah. Absolutely. So, just sort of waiting for Matt to clear a bit of a path there so I could <laughs> do some precise shots. I think that's the first thing you want to do in this sort of thing is get rid of those down turrets. That's troublesome down yeah. turrets. But as you see there, they, they also have multiple hit points. So now that I've got S, now the enemy bullets are going to go really slow. So it's the coins. So that's what S does. Slows things down. Oh, see that uh -oh. save? And I've, uh, I'm not doing very well. Look at that. That's the second credit I've used. Yeah. And my score is expensive today. My score is off the charts. Yeah. Yeah. Too high. There you go. I think you might have to change the hut a bit. <laughs> uh, so there you go. We've taken out one of the turrets. What do they have? Two hit points. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good to get that guy out of the way. That means with my score, um, I'm not going to get any more bonus fire, so I never thought anyone would get this high score. <laughs> How could you ever anticipate anyone being this good? <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty cool then, we uh, knocked that bullet out with the ball. When you've got a tractor, you can just uh, have to hit the ball. Oh. I think we're going to be complete this game. I think so too. And there's no no ending to this game properly. <laughs> it just says you win. Or does it, I guess? Yeah, oh well let's find out. <laughs> let's let's read on. Ah, uh, this stuff is annoying. <laughs> that was hard. I don't find this level too uh, too distressing. <laughs> Gotta keep going. It gets harder. <laughs> it does. Having the um, the boundary there, that's pretty good. The barrier, barrier, that's the one. So that's the standard barrier. That won't catch any of our power ups or coins or anything, but it will deflect the ball. What is it? Three times? I think it's about five. Now. Yeah. So yeah. originally it was three, but I had fucked it up. So that's, you know, that's very handy on a level like this where we've got those fast returning bricks. Um, it's a great insurance pole there yeah, that's like, we've already taken about three hit points out of it, so. Oh, what a shot. Well, thank you, sir. Ah, <laughs> uh, So you see, it's, uh, it's getting more and more transparent. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, the classic theme of this game as, as things lose hit points they become more and more transparent. You like that? I think it makes sense. It's kind of a staple of uh, classic video games, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, sure, let's say let's say it is. It's, no one needs to know. Oh, I see that. That was, that was amazing. See this level is tough. You gotta have it. It's uh it's time consuming. <laughs> <laughs> you got a false sense of security because of this barrier, but uh, I guess I'm we doing the hard work because you're doing it. All. We would have probably lost like four lives by now without the barrier. So, <laughs> yeah. there we go. Whoa. It's very intimidating this level. Oh my god! Whew. So your first thing is like, oh my god, how am I going to survive this? <laughs> it's a very interesting one. Oh, really, really cool elements. 
Yeah, so there's the ultra. Oh. What luck. Look at that. Yeah. And then another, another two ultra balls. And I just missed it. And then another one. Yeah. Oh. There's some bombs in the middle. Uh, it's work at this level. And now fire too. Oh god, uh, destroy it. Oh, this level's gonna be hard. Some more of those turrets, and we've got some stun frags. So we've nearly completed uh, this game. We're at level 30, yeah. and there's um, 32 levels and a boss. The second boss. The second boss, yeah. Quiet now. <laughs> Going to focus mode. This is hard. It is a difficult one. There's a lot to worry about. Um, it's obviously a fairly limited field of players to where the uh, where the ball's likely to land, and then you've got bullets flying at you into that same space. Yes. So it is. Um, it's pretty tricky in how you oh, manage your time. Get a better shot though. No, that is fantastic. You couldn't. Yes, it was, it would be impossible. Only better if it was uh magic <laughs> yeah. If that was a hot ball, that would have oh. just, whoa. Imagine, <laughs> imagine. Imagine the possibilities. Okay. Are you imagining it? Yes, right that's now? what he said. Yeah. yeah, I did ask you to, so it's good. <laughs> you know this um background reminds me of Haraskar. Oh. Yeah? Haraskar. Yes. So I don't kill it then. You're too busy thinking about Harris Gas. What? Yes, they are. No, not in Adelaide. Really? Aren't they? Are you sure? They totally are. They have a new building. Um, maybe let's let's remember that we're recording this. <laughs> we are meant to be talking about the game. Oh, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. not what different shops are uh, in Adelaide. Uh, in Adelaide, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so this level, uh, that guy that was shooting us, this. I think it's meant to be the shape of a, of a skull. Yeah, I think that reads. I, I think that's... Uh, oh, that's a I sacrificed my... That's the end of my life. That's it. The end of that... Um, I've got to continue now. That was a big score. The score that broke the... Um, broke the game. Yeah, well... <laughs> This level uh, is hard. See this? Yeah, these, these turrets are, are really... Relentless. ...very difficult to get to. Um, but I guess that makes sense when you're near the end of the game. It's got to, it's got to get a bit tricky, doesn't it? And this is a yellow level. That's all. So this is actually one of the easier ones, is that? No, no. Oh, oh hot ball. What were we saying? Look at that. That's perfect. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, but I thought it was an eye for an eye. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you've got to bark like a dog to get out of a bad situation. <laughs> yeah, I find that. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure everyone knows how that is. <laughs> Who hasn't been there? Oh, two perfect balls. Look at that, uh, turrets are gone. Now it's, uh, now it's just a matter now of time. Just, now they sort of call up the cleanup crew. That's right. This, uh, this crazy skull face is days and numbered. Oh, you could've used it. I did, just then. I wanted, I wanted a bit of build up though. There's a spark ball, that's pretty good. Oh, airstrike. Now we're about to get Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, this is going to be hard. This one is very tricky. Same the last level. Uh, even though it looks like, you know, we've kind of got the bases covered. Um, by occupying most of the space with just our paddles, it's very difficult not to hit the sides. Um, yeah, it's very easy to hit the ones on the side. And you can quite easily lose the ball to somewhere where you can not actually retrieve it as well, which is another. No, I think we've only got which that. Which I'm, oh, I'm about to no. do. I just thought I'd oh. illustrate the point. <laughs> we can't, we can't. There we go. Like, no, you keep your way. This is the last level for the boss. Oh, yes. Yeah, very 
playing like you would have got up, obviously. And okay, oh. I'm the final boss, the devil is this time. These ones are good. I like these ones. So they, they do drop it like it's not. Oh, it's lying to me. Oh, see that? And uh, they're pretty, pretty quick to kill you. Before you know it, you're dead. I was talking like that because I, I had a baby with the lunch. <laughs> Is that the baby with the baby? That's the bagel effect. Get out of here, you <laughs> schmuck. <laughs> oh. Hey, come on, I'm walking here. <laughs> Hopefully no, no New Yorkers uh, watch this video and get highly offended. <laughs> it's like to boycott our game. <laughs> There's a lot of people in New York, you know, you don't, you don't want to burn that bridge. We are just having a <laughs> That's right. Exactly right. But this boss battle is about, yeah, trying to fight two people at once. Because um, a few other boss battles where you fight somebody with this kind of like arcane kind of battle. Oh. oh. That is, looks good. As you see, the, the attacks are just really, really quick for these guys. The red one is a lot more crazy than the other. <coughs> and those, oh, he hates me. Now there's um. He was focused. They picked someone to focus on. I was going to say there's some pretty reasonable AI on these guys, isn't there? So. Oh. If you're if you keep attacking them, they're, they're going to attack you. Which oh. makes pretty good sense. And when me. they fall asleep, it means they're at least. And I uh, think, uh, the game has uh, bugged out. We do have a bug, so <laughs> it thinks there's two balls in play right now. Um, obviously there's one. Mm. But, you know, these yeah. things happen. That's going to be pretty <laughs> bad to be near the end of the game and to have this. It means we are not going to, we shouldn't lose our balls. That's a shame. So we can't lose our balls. The pressure's on. Um, or we both just die at once. Now, what do you think will happen if I jet into the bad voice? Uh, you, you will just die, so that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, makes, that makes pretty good sense. I haven't oh. programmed a lot of um, jet bat stuff. Look at that, I, I am just flying through these credits, aren't I? Yeah, these guys are tough. There we go. So I think that's the one we want to want to hit first, you know, that's always the one I go for. Cause He's very fast. Um, pretty good gem from him. That's good. Keep this ball in play, otherwise the game's... Yeah. <laughs> <That's> so, <fast. laughs> obviously this is a problem that will get fixed, and you know, that's uh, that's why we do this testing. <laughs> oh. Uh, again. We're not going to get a ball. That's very rare. Um, we could just, we could... I'm gonna put the code in so we can get there some... There is a special trick we can do, ladies and gentlemen. Put in the off. debug mode. So, now we get some cheats, and we get some, uh, pretty interesting little artifacts on the screen. Yeah, some balls for us. <laughs> oh, yeah, just ignore that artifact on the screen. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. Maybe there could be a story behind it, you know? Like that's a, we lost all that balls again. We summon, that's a wizard, that green rectangle, alright? Let's go with that. And he, he magically gives us balls. That is not going to be a feature in the game. I don't know if we uh, completed it. Can we say we completed it? I think we would have completed it. I think, I think we would have too. So here's our ring. You oh. win! And that's the uh, placeholder for the ending. So that was uh, breaking bricks on normal difficulty with um, unfortunately a little bug at the end. But that that is pretty smooth. Yeah. But now it's sort of like the ball thing is fixed up. <laughs> the ball count. Yeah, so it's just just unfortunate that um, there's sort of nothing you could do when it still thinks there's a ball in play. Then you could die to get a ball back, but there's no there's actually no way to die without being able to. Actually antagonize the enemy. Killed by the boss. Yeah, but he doesn't doesn't really attack you unless you hit him, so that's Nah, he'll shoot. Oh yeah. That's true. 
that's true. So that's it. I hope you had fun. I think you know a little bit more about the game. Um, I've got a few more boss battles to make. Got about four more to make, and I got some music. I got some um, other types of multiplayer, like some verses. Let's let's hear a bit about the music. What's your crap with music? Uh, music that I wrote about over ten years ago. I'm sort of rearranging all this computer game sort of music. It's kind of written in like old an old tracker called Impulse Tracker. It's kind of a bit retro as well. Um, yeah, I want to get the boss battles done first. I want to sign off on that. So um, we might as well sign off on this as well. So thank you very much. We're just going to go back to the uh, start. If you want to play the game as well, that's worth mentioning. Yes, if you want to play the game, you can check it out um, online at www.breakingbricks.io and then you can have a game as long as you're using Google Chrome. Google Chrome. And at this point, you may find that some, uh, some very low-spec computers might struggle to run the game a little bit. We're, we're hoping to clean that up in the later stage of development. Yeah. Um, but it does need fairly... Uh, Fairly reasonable system requirements, surprisingly. Yeah, the phaser that it's built on uh, is pretty resource hungry. Yeah. Alright, thank you very much. I've been uh, Matt back here. And I've been Chris Tokyo Chapman. Thanks for joining us. And that was Breaking Bricks.